Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking movie reaction review. As promised, we're doing more universal horror, and uh, even the more specific universal monsters. Today we are reviewing the first sequel to The Creature from the Black Lagoon, Revenge of the Creature from 1955. I reviewed The Creature of the Black Lagoon a while back. Uh, around the time I was reviewing some Harry Housen stuff, uh, just because you gotta love The Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's one of my favorite films of all time. The Creature from the Black Lagoon, in my opinion, is the best universal horror film. It was one of the last ones from that original uh, run, but uh, I think it's actually the best one. I think it's better than Bride of Frankenstein. I think it's better than Dracula. I think it's better than The Invisible Man. But... I feel like the sequels don't carry on that greatness, you know? So, Avenger the Creature, 1955, it's a horror sci-fi film. Uh, sci-fi was becoming more of a thing in the 50s. We're moving past the kind of supernatural horror, and if we had horror films, uh, they were more science fiction, which this film is. It's an hour and 22 minutes, not bad. Uh, there are several places to watch it. YouTube, Google Play, Vudu, and Amazon Prime Video. It's got a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is low. A 5.7 out of 10 on IMDb, which is around, like, average. And then a 90% like ratio uh, from Google users, which is high. So, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that about viewer consensus, because it's all over the place. Um, so, Florida aquarium workers communicate via cattle prod with a captured Gill Man. They call him the Gill Man a lot in this movie. Gill Man was actually an on-set nickname for him, uh, as well as Creech, but Gill Man stuck more than Creech. And then Gill Man was used in, like, promotional material materials and stuff, so it kind of... Uh, ended up being this, the creature's actual name, which is pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, Gilman. Released on March 23rd, uh, 1955. Uh, I think it might have been on Mystery Science Theater 3000 at some point. Directed by Jack Arnold, uh, I believe. Pretty wild, uh, Film. Story by uh, William, William Allen, starring John Ager, Lori Nelson, uh, John Bromfield, and Nestor Pavia. This was also the very first film that Clint Eastwood ever appeared in. He's basically just a lab worker that you see for a short period of time, and then you don't see him again. This was the first film he was ever in. He's also in Tarantula, which I'm going to review very soon. Uh, it's a kaiju film, believe it or not, from the 50s. Lots of giant insect movies from the 50s. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Revenge of the Creature. This sequel takes the next logical step for the creature. Because in the first film, they go to the creature's home in the Amazon. And then in this film, they bring the creature back to the uh, modern world, so to speak. Which is exactly what I would have done with this sequel. They did it very differently than I would have done it. The way I would have done it is, like, humans ran him out of his habitat. And then he started, like... Uh, attacking a small town or something uh, in, like, South America or Central America uh, that he got run out of. But I think they just take him to America, like America. <laughs> that's that's kind of... Uh, that was a little problematic thing to say, I'm sorry. They take him to the United States, I believe. Uh, so they capture him, which seemed way too easy. The last film, they spent half the film trying to capture him, and they got five people killed. And in this movie, they're like, uh, yeah, they capture him so fast and so quickly. Like, basically, first or second try. They take him to an aquarium, uh, where he's chained up by the foot inside of, uh, this tank. And I was like, oh, man, this, this poor creature. I remember the first time I watched this, I was like, Damn, this poor creature. And this time, I feel even worse for him, somehow, uh, upon my second viewing. Because I actually haven't watched this since high school, uh, which was like a decade ago. So, uh, it's been a long time since I'd seen this film. Because I don't, I'm, once again, I'm not a big fan of the creature sequels. Uh, 
And they do that, and then they spend like half of the runtime of this movie, more than half the runtime of this movie, just doing experiments on the creature. And not only are the exper are the experiments like cruel towards the creature, maybe not by 50 standards, but by today's standards for sure. Not only were they cruel, but also they were boring. <laughs> Like, the whole time the creature is in the aquarium in this film, it's it's pretty boring, except for the couple times he attacks people. He escapes twice. He escapes when they have him in the transition tank when they're trying to wake him up. And they get him out of his coma that they put him in when they captured him. And then they immediately capture him again. Once again, very easily. And sure, they were more prepared for him than the other crew was. The other crew was prepared for fossils, not a living creature. But still, it seems too easy. Uh, it makes it almost seem like they were incompetent in the first film. You know what I mean? So, they have him get captured again. And they do all the stuff to him. And then he escapes again. And he runs into the ocean. There's this cool scene where he flips a car. It's dope. Uh, I like when he flips the car. I, I'm, it's it's not super exciting, but I do like when he flips it. Uh, just because you've never seen him perform a feat of strength that grand before. And it's like, whoa, this creature's way stronger than we thought. And then he goes in the ocean. And I was like, oh, I guess he's salt and fresh water then? But he does this weird thing. So the only person who really emphasized with him, em empathized with him... Uh, while he was in the aquarium was this female scientist. By the way, the screenwriter for this film had a thing for blondes. There are multiple cracks made by men about cute blondes, and then the female lead and romantic interest is a cute blonde. Whoever, the screenwriters, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, screenwriter, screenwriter, screen. <laughs> we're looking at my notes frantically. Screenwriter, William Allen, maybe? Uh... <laughs> I was like, who? Uh, who is it? But, yeah, so... They loved blondes, and, uh... You know, there was kind of... There was a sexual charged energy with the creature uh, in the first film that was handled incredibly well. In this film, it's not handled as well. The creature is basically simping for her, even though she was one of the ones that tormented him, which is also very weird. Uh... The woman in the first film torments him way less than this woman was. This woman was, like, directly involved in it, you know? Like, she was there with him while he was getting shocked by the, like, cattle prod or whatever. I, I'm, I'm going to keep calling it a cattle prod because I grew up on a beef cattle farm, so it's a cattle prod to me. Well, it said that in the read-up, too, so I guess it's still a cattle prod. But... It escapes, and then it spends its time following her around. She's in a motel by the water, and it, like, comes up to her room and kills her dog. That's right, a dog dies in this film. So be warned! And you do see its corpse, and it does look authentic, which is odd. There's also uh, some animal cruelty in this, uh, like, actual animal cruelty, I believe. Um, because... Uh, like the the first time you see the creature in this film, he jumps out of the water, grabs a stork, like a real bird, and drags it underwater. And I'm like, that's super cruel to that bird. So that that was a big instance of animal cruelty in this film. Be aware of that as well. There's also lots of simulated animal cruelty, which is much easier to stomach because it feels like it's making a point about animal cruelty, you know, and the environment and etc. Uh, this film actually had a very similar shot to the last one, where it was like they poisoned the water to get the creature, but it didn't work because he was in his underground cavern. And then the woman, like, flicks the cigarette into the water, and then it, like, transitions to all these dead fish. And it's like, if that wasn't an intentional environmental message in the first film, then I'll blow my brains out. But then in this one, it also does that same thing where they, like, set off explosives underwater, and then, you, and then it transitions to a bunch of dead fish floating on top. And I was like, that's ripped out of the first one. Uh... Which makes sense, because the very last shot of this movie is the same shot from the first film. I think it's actually stock footage, which is wild. But, so they uh, they have to chase the creature down because it kidnaps her. So they're, like, chasing it down the river because it has to carry her. Because the creature is smart. This film establishes that the creature is incredibly smart. I mean, that was established in the last film, but he's even smarter in this one. And they're like, hey, he's... 
doing creature stuff, but he's smart, uh, and he learns very, very quickly, and so he knows she can't breathe water, so he's not taking her uh, submerged, and he has to, like, leave her on the riverbank every now and then and resubmerge himself, because he's amphibious, and uh, every time someone tries to get her off the riverbank, he, like, charges back out and kills people. Uh, yeah, but eventually they do beat him, they shoot him a bunch after they get her away from him, and then it seems like he's dead again, but we know he's not, because he's in, because there's a third one. Uh, so yeah, they keep seemingly killing the Gill Man, and then he just comes back. Basically the same thing they did with Frankenstein and the Wolf Man. They didn't do that with Dracula. Dracula stayed dead. <laughs> the, it was his descendants, uh, and other family members that we kept running into. His daughter, son, like two more sons, I think. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. But, one or two more sons, I don't remember. But... Yeah, the thing about this film is, it's way more boring than the first one. It's not scary at all. There are a couple moments that are some good scares. Uh, this was still kind of in the 3D fad. So there are a couple shots that are like obviously 3D gags, like the creature shooting up out of the tank the second time he escapes. That's obviously there. That's obviously shot the way it is for the 3D effect. Uh, you can actually get a 3D copy of the original and this one very easily. The problem is you have to have like a 3D TV and stuff to watch it. And I don't have a 3D Blu-ray player or a 3D TV. Even though I have 3D copies, uh, I don't have anything to watch them on. But they came in my Legacy Collection. If you get the Blu-ray Legacy Collection for this, it gets, comes with Creature from the Black Lagoon, Creature from the Black Lagoon 3D, Revenge of the Creature, Revenge of the Creature 3D, and The Creature Walks Among Us, along with a ton of special features that are fantastic. Trust me. But... Yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of this film, you know? It had this really uh, cool moment that I liked, uh, where our male and female love interest and main characters were on the beach, and she's talking about how she doesn't know what she wants to do with her future, because she wants to marry him, but she doesn't want to, like, give up her career. And, because at, at this time, like, if a woman gets married at this point in history when this film was made... Like, she basically gives up her career to have children and stuff, which is unfair to her. And the male character's even like, that's kind of unfair, and it's very hard, and men don't have to make that choice. And, uh, I feel bad for you. And I'm like, that's kind of woke for the time. And she's like, yeah, I just, I, I really love my job, and I don't want to have to leave it. And I was like, dang, this is actually acknowledging some, like, like an actual social problem for women from the time, and I was very surprised and impressed. I don't remember that from my first viewing. Very interesting, but the environmentalism themes are kind of still there, but not near as much. This this film seems to be more about spectacle than actual... Um, it's more spectacle than substance. I don't know, something about this movie, it, it just doesn't do it for me. Which is weird, because the creature from the Black Lagoon is one of my favorite monsters of all time, but I don't like two out of his three movies. And I mean, this is a film that I'll rewatch over and over again just because universal horror is, like, my obsession. But... You know, I, I think... <laughs> I think I'm just gonna have to... Maybe leave it at that. I mean, the creature still looks great. Uh, the underwater scenes are, shil are still shot with incredible skill. Underwater scenes like this were incredibly difficult and dangerous to do at the time. The creature design is different in the eyes in this one. His eyes are much more bulging, like big bug-eyed. It doesn't look as good as the previous creature in the previous film. Um... But it's, it's still, you know, one of the best monsters ever made. This was actually Universal's, like, original, original monster. Because, like, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Invisible Man, they ripped all those off from books. Well, they didn't rip them off. They, they got the rights and everything. Not that you need the rights for those anymore. But you do need the rights for the Creature of the Black Lagoon. Uh, it's not public domain. But it is, it's very, very good. If you haven't... And it's like a great creature. If you haven't seen the original Creature from the Black Lagoon, that's a must-see film before you die. But Revenge of the Creature... Unless you're just desperate for more creature, it's not that great. It's not really anything special. I mean, it's like, okay. It's like, okay. 
So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all next time. I believe the next film I'm doing is just the next Creature sequel, The Creature Walks Among Us, uh, which is a very weird premise, and you'll see that next time. So that's it. Thank you all once again. See you all then.